electric circuit. All we need to do is add conductors, and then we have our, uh, our we have our electric motor. So the conductors are usually buried in slots in the in the stator. And in the case I'm going to show here, this is a three phase motor. So I have a set of, of wires that are wired. Uh, to one phase and then a set that are wired to the next phase. So like maybe this is a uh, peak current going upwards of uh, six, uh, then 120 degree phase going upward, then zero phase, then 120 phase downward, and then uh, full current going downward. So now we have a fully functioning electric motor that's producing torque right here. So we have the magnetic field and we have the um, current can carry the current carrying conducted within the uh, magnetic field. So this is kind of uh, my my uh, very crude attempt at, at drawing. This is but it's really not too bad. This is a real rotor and stator out of a GM product on in this picture down here on the lower right. Uh, I don't remember whether this is out of a, a bolt or out of a, a volt, but um, you know, this is a real rotor and stator. No, there's, they both have kind of smooth surfaces. You can't really see the embedded magnets too much unless you're able to see the shading here. And the, uh, in this, this has a lot of slots to it too. For the motor to spin, it's necessary that we that we uh, re-energize the different sets of coils uh, around the outside in turn, with uh, to move along with the the magnet in the center. So the energies the energizing of the stator has to be synchronous with the with the motion of the rotor. Otherwise, it loses torque and it just stops. That's why this is called a synchronous motor, or sometimes it's called a permanent magnet synchronous motor, or sometimes it's called a permanent magnet motor. But the idea is the same. When you have this type of thing, uh, this type of motor, you need to have uh, the, the energization of it, the, the turning on of the electric current to be in, time with the motion of the of the magnetic rotor.